Build systems in Sublime Text allow you to easily execute any arbitrary external program. And so far we've covered how to create a simple one of these and actually use it to trigger a build. But what we've covered so far requires you to manually select the build system that you want to use from within the menu. And while that does indeed work and can be handy in a few circumstances, if you find yourself switching from task to task, having to constantly go into the menu and change what build is currently active can be a little bit of a hassle. However, it turns out that Sublime Text offers us multiple ways to allow it to automatically select the correct build. And today, that is the topic of discussion. Hey, hello fellow Sublime Text fanatics, Odan Nerder, and welcome to this week's video. We're going to continue our discussion on build systems by talking about how you can make your build system be automatically selectable by Sublime Text based on the context in which you're executing the build. Now, as we've seen in previous videos in this series, it's pretty easy to create yourself a build system, tell it what program you'd like to execute, give it some extra information on what it should actually do, and you're off and running and executing your tools from directly within Sublime Text. But, as we've covered so far, doing such a thing would require you to constantly go into the build system menu and select a new build system every time you change tasks. The good news is Sublime Text offers us multiple different ways to give it clues about which build system should be used in any particular circumstance, making this job a lot easier because we can just go into the menu, set the build system to automatic, and rely on Sublime to select the correct build for us or provide us a constrained selected list of things that could possibly apply in any given situation. And before we proceed, we should point out that as in all of the videos so far in this video series, if you look down in the description of the video, you're going to find a link to the official documentation on build systems if you would like a little bit more information about what it is that we're talking about here. And of course, down there below the video, there's, there's some other buttons. You know what they're for. Now let's jump into talking about the not one, not two, but three different ways that we can tell Sublime Text how to select a build automatically. The first of the automatic selection methods we're going to talk about here is perhaps the most commonly used one, and that is the selector method. By using this, what we're doing is we're telling Sublime Text, for this particular build system, it applies to this particular type of file. And that will allow Sublime to automatically either select it straight out or provide it to you in a constrained list of build systems that potentially apply to the current type of file. And remember, when we talk about this, we're generally, in these examples anyway, talking about something that might be used for a programming or scripting language of some sort. But you could use build systems for executing any sort of arbitrary external program. And if you have a particular type of file that that tool would be useful for, this is a great way to do that. And all you have to do is go into our build system and add a key named selector and then provide a value for the selector key that tells Sublime Text what type of file that this is associated with. Now, this is in particular a scope selector. That's a pretty big topic. We don't want to get to into that in any way here in this video, but down in the description of the video, you're going to find a link to documentation about this and also a video that will go through in detail exactly how scopes and scope selectors work if you're unfamiliar with that topic. For our purposes here, the easiest way to get at the value that you need for this key is to open a file of the type that you are most interested in doing something with this with, and then use the tools developer show scope name menu item. There's also a key binding associated with this. Now you're going to see, uh, perhaps depending on where you are, inside of the file a vast quantity of information in here. But what you really need is just the first line. That's the one that identifies what type of file this is. So take that part and then go and plug it into the value of the selector key. Once you save your build, now the build system in the menu can be set to automatic. And when you go to a file of that particular type and try to execute a build, it'll either be selected automatically or as in this case, if there's more than one build system that applies, it'll show you a constrained list and your build system will be in there because you told it that it applies in this particular situation and we're off and running. Using the selector method of automatically selecting a build is the most popular for a reason. Generally, if there's a particular type of file, there's a particular tool that associates with that type of file. And this is a great way to pull something like this off. But this doesn't always work. And there's a couple of key reasons why it might not. The first is that Sublime requires a syntax definition in order to be able to uniquely identify a particular type of file by its extension. So if you're using something that doesn't have a unique extension for the, its particular type of file, then there's no way to assign a particular type and there's no way to use selector to do something like this. Also, you may have a situation where 99 times out of 100, this particular type of file should be executed using this tool. But there's a small outlier case where if the name of the file is slightly different in some way and unique, then it should use a different tool instead. And we can make both of these situations work seamlessly by way of the second method for automatically selecting a build system, which is the file patterns key. 
So going to our build system, what we have here is a build system that will automatically select Python based on its type. Let's comment that out and add in file patterns instead. Now this is a pluralized key. That's our hint that this is a list of more one or more items. So we need to put square brackets around here. The value of this key is a comma separated list of file patterns, which if they match the current file should be used as uh, indication that this build can be automatically selected. Now previously we specified the type of file as Python. What we could put in this list is star.py which would tell Sublime that for any file that matches the .py extension this will be selected. That's not something we would normally need to do because there is a type of file that is associated with this but what we could also do is change this from star.py to say star.script and now with this in place if we were to open up what is ostensibly a Python program, but which doesn't have that extension, it has a dot script in extension instead, then when we try to build this, this build system can be automatically selected for us and it will go ahead and trigger because we've told it that this particular type of file matches. Now, of course, this is a bit of a contrived uh, way to do something like this because you could just tell Sublime Text that dot script files are Python files and then everything would work as expected. But this is simulating the situation of what if there was no syntax definition available. Now the third method for automatically selecting a build takes a slight different tack because what we've covered thus far is ways to tell Sublime based on the type of the current file that you're editing or the name of the current file that you're editing that this is the tool to be used. There are some tools out there that work across a whole folder of files and the term determination on whether or not to use them isn't based on that. They may have some sort of configuration file that's present within the project that tells them exactly how they should work. And in that case, you would want the build to be selected based on the fact that you're using that tool regardless of the type of file that you're currently editing at the given time. A couple of key examples of this are Apache's Ant, which uses a build.xml file to control exactly how a Java program is built. And there's a build system for Ant that's built in right out of the box if you happen to be a Java developer. And the other is a fairly common tool that is used amongst C and C++ developers called Make, which takes a configuration file called a Make file and provides a complete configuration that says what tools need to be executed at what times, on what files, in what order, in order to completely bring a project up to date. And if you happen to be using such a tool, then you want to be able to select the build based on the fact that that file is actually present no matter where you happen to be inside of your project. There's a build system built into Sublime Text for this as well. And as we can see here, it uses a notion of something called a key files key. Now again, this is a list of items. It's a, it's a pluralized key, which is a list of file names. And if any of these files are present in the current directory or any of its parents inside of the project, that tells Sublime that this should actually be selected as a, a possible candidate for an automatic build. So in in this example, we have a simple C program. We have this very simple make file that is also present here. And if we were to be in the C file and try to execute the build, we can see make as an option for said build and choosing it executes the make tool, which uses the configuration to know that it needs to compile this program and then it can uh, link it together and the whole operation is complete. Now, as a pro tip, if you are a beginning C and C++ developer and you're not already using Make, then you may be doing something like creating a different build system for every program that you're trying to create because you need to provide different command line options or you need to compile multiple files together in order to get something working. That will work. It takes more time on your part and a little bit of time spent learning how Make files work would allow you to easily create a configuration file on a project by project basis that tells the system exactly how to build and then you only need one build system and as we've seen, it can be automatically selected as well. Of course, we've only scratched the surface of what we can do with build systems. There's a lot of more customizability to come in future videos, such as being able to specify the current worker directory, navigating between errors, even taking control of the entire build process by using a plugin. And those are all things we're going to cover in future videos in the series. I hope to see you there. Until then, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.